This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 400 people to click the link in the description are going to get a free two-month trial to Skillshare, where you can easily learn to start your own YouTube channel or business. Thanks for the support, Skillshare, and for helping me to build this hall table. Or is it a console table? Or maybe sofa table? Well, I'm going to put it in the hall, so I'm going to go with hall table. Potato tomato. For me, this project was all about getting back to basics. Lately it seems like I've been doing a bunch of quicker projects and hyperlapsed video, and that's fine. There's a time and purpose for those things, but, well, I kind of wanted to do a project more in the vein of how things were when I first started my channel a year and a half ago. So that's what I'm going to try to do with this one. Anyhow, so after I'd initially broken my walnut down into some manageable chunks, I started working on the legs. First I ripped my board into two pieces, each of which could yield two legs. Then before I cut out my individual legs, I cross cut my pieces to their finished lengths using my miter gauge set to 5 degrees, so that way the legs would end up having that same degree splay. Don't worry about the fact that I'm severely failing to cut on the line in this shot. That was an initial layout mark that I abandoned. Next, I laid out the taper that I wanted on the finished piece. I'm going to have it go from 3 quarters of an inch at the bottom to 2 inches at the top. Then it was just a matter of lining up my marks on the tapering jig and cutting out my four legs. The one other piece of the leg that I needed to cut out was this little top stretcher piece that connects them. And here I wanted to try something a little different aesthetically. So instead of using material the same thickness as the rest of the leg pieces, I used some stock that's about a half of an inch thinner. Moving forward, I'd like to play more with variety in the thickness of the pieces that I use, to see if it just maybe adds dimension, and I think it did here. Next I started laying out the joinery I'd need to cut into the legs. Here I'm taking the aforementioned thinner piece and marking out where I need to recess the legs. And then off camera I marked out where I need to clear out a dado that will eventually hold a shelf. Then I put my dado blade in and made all the cuts. Lastly, I cut the thinner pieces to length, and I left them just a little bit long so that after gluing everything together I'd be able to sand or trim them flush. With the legs out of the way, for now, I turned my attention to the case portion of the build. For this I'm going to use walnut plywood with some hardwood strips on the front to cover up the plywood edges. If I were doing this project with no materials on hand to start with, I'd have actually just used hardwood for the case. It might even come out to be a little bit cheaper if you did that. But I was using material that I already had from other projects so it just made more sense to use some plywood here. Anyhow, so after I roughed out my three pieces, the top's going to be hardwood, but more on that later, I ripped and glued on the hardwood strips. Once they were dry, I sanded them flush, and then I cut a bevel on both sides of the long bottom piece and on the bottom corner of each of the short side pieces.
Next, I cut a rabbit along the back of the pieces and that'll eventually hold a back panel. And then I glued it all together. I just used the tape and folding method to glue up the corners and then threw one clamp on top in order to apply just the right amount of pressure to bring the sides into perfect 90 degrees. Or, well, at least close to it. Then the last thing that I did before calling it a day was to do a bit of sanding and finishing on some of the parts of the build that would be hard or maybe even impossible to access once I start putting things together. The next night after work, I started cutting the top and the lower shelf piece. The lower shelf piece I left oversized for the time being because I knew I was going to have to cut it to size based off of the dimensions that the base dictate as things start coming together. But the top could be cut to the finished dimensions right here. Then I used a chamfer bit to route a little 45 degree detail on the underside of the top. Normally I make my bevels a lot sharper and more drastic than this, but I just wanted to be a little bit more subtle with this piece. Flash forward another 24 hours, and the next evening I started cutting out these little detail cross stretcher shelf support things. I'm not really sure what these things should be called technically, and I think the piece would be absolutely fine without them, but they do give it a little bit of support towards the center of the case to help prevent sagging. So I guess I'll call them case bras. Once the pieces were cut to size, I started marking out all the cuts I'd need to make on the bandsaw, and then once that was done, I started cutting. My bandsaw blade was a little too wide to cut the radius I had drawn, so I just nibbled away at material to get close to the line, and then sanded to the line to finish everything off. In total, I needed two case bras, so I traced the finished one onto the other blank and roughed it out on the bandsaw, and then used some double-sided tape and a template router to duplicate the piece. While I'm doing that, I'd like to take a second to thank this week's sponsor, Skillshare. If you don't know what Skillshare is, it's an online learning community for creators where they have more than 17,000 classes in things like videography, production, photography, and more to help people who potentially want to run their own business or YouTube channel or just learn new skills for whatever reason. Now, personally speaking, other than woodworking, obviously, the two skills that I utilize most in my day-to-day -day operations for running this channel are video editing and photo editing. Both of them are extremely crucial to putting out good videos that people want to watch. And you could use any number of software platforms to get the job done, I happen to use Adobe Premiere and Photoshop. But the point is, no matter what software you prefer, chances are Skillshare will have likely multiple in-depth online courses for everybody from total beginners to those with years of experience. Now, if you do plan to use that software, the two courses that I would recommend would be Adobe Premiere Pro CC for Beginners and Basics of Photoshop, Fundamentals for Beginners. Back when I learned to edit photo and video, it was pretty much just trial and error, reading forms, and just kind of trying to fumble my way through problem after problem. And I can't tell you how valuable learning the right way from the beginning is and how I wish Skillshare existed when I was at that point in my life. And while I can't hop in a DeLorean to go back in time and rectify that, if you're just starting out now, you can. Sort of. Anyhow, so premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access to learning, but the first 400 people who click the link in the description below are going to get two months for free. So go, click it now. Seriously. Pause the video, click the link, and then finish watching after you get the two free months. Alright, thanks Skillshare. Now let's get back to it. So with all of my pieces complete, save for the drawer, I started assembling things. I started off with the legs, which are attached directly to the case via a couple of screws on the inside of the case. So these you'll never be able to see unless you pull the drawer out. And once the legs were attached, I could install my case bras. For these, I had a few different ideas on how I could install them, but I went with the simplest. So basically I attached the center point on the inside of the case, just like I did with the legs. 
And then to attach them to the legs, I screwed through the leg and into the piece, which meant you could see a screw hole from the outside. So to cover these, I started by drilling a recess using my 3 8 inch bit that the screws could hide inside of. And then I cut some tapered plugs out of some scrap from the project that I could install to hide everything. And because these are coming from offcuts from the same pieces of wood that I'm using for the legs, by the time you sand them, as long as you have the grain oriented the same way, these things are nearly invisible from anything more than a couple feet away. To attach the top, I used four dominoes that go from the top of the plywood into the underside of the top. After I installed them in the plywood, I just rested the top in position and marked out where I'd need to cut on the underside of the table. I forgot to film this, but it's pretty straightforward. But anyhow, before I glued the top down, I went ahead and installed my lower shelf. As I mentioned before, I cut it to the proper size by referencing the space between the dados in my leg. Then once it was in, I secured it using screws and plugs just like I did before. This you could easily glue in, but I didn't want to make a mess, and I figured since I was already making the other plugs, I'd just keep at it. The last thing to do was to build the drawer box. I've done drawer boxes in plenty of other videos, but I actually decided to make a different kind of box for this project. For this one, it's just a simple box that slides into the cubby, no rails or hardware. The front and back piece received a rabbet to accept the side pieces, and the side pieces get a groove for a bottom panel. I'm building the front out of hardwood and using some leftover 3 quarter inch plywood material for the sides and the back. Half inch plywood would probably be a little bit more appropriate, but again, I was just using whatever was on hand. After I'd cut out all the pieces, leaving them slightly oversized, I joined and planed the front piece, bringing it down to a better thickness of about an inch. Then I nibbled away at the front piece to get it to the exact width it needed to be, and used that setting on my table saw so that I could cut out the sides and the back piece as well. Then I did the same thing to the back piece to get the exact length that I needed, and transferred that over to the front piece so that everything was exactly the right size. Next I used my plywood to mark on the front and back pieces how wide the rabbit would need to be. And then I cut them in by first cross cutting on the table saw, and then using this jig to run the piece vertically to clear out all of the material. Then I cut the grooves into the side piece that are going to hold the bottom in, and then use that mark to determine how wide to cut the back piece to finalize it. The back piece is narrower so that the bottom panel can slide in after the drawer is assembled. You'll see what I mean in a minute. The last thing to do before I assembled the drawer was to cut a negative space out for a drawer pool. And then I cut in this little recess around the perimeter of the piece just to make the reveal between the drawer and the front of the cabinet a little bit nicer. And then finally I could assemble. Here now you can see that the back is shorter as I put the drawer bottom in. As the drawer box was drying, I attached a back panel to the case. After I finished scaring my wife and kids and blowing out our eardrums, the only thing left to do was sand and finish. And by the way, if you're wondering why my kids' lips are blue, it has less to do with the 83 degree Southern California November afternoons and more to do with a lollipop. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible. New to the list this month are Mike and Gilstrap, Richard Johnson, Ina Santos, Chet Leonard, and Scott Lee. Because of your generosity, I'm able to give these videos the proper care and attention that they deserve. And you're enabling me to make something that I, and hopefully you, can be proud of. So, thank you. If you want to find out more about how you can support the show too, click on the Patreon link in the description and check it out. And as always, no pressure.
If you put a table in a hall, it's a hall table. If you put it in a dining room, it's a dining table. Near a sofa, it's a sofa table, and in a kitchen, it's a kitchen table. Which made me think, man, a couple hundred years ago, down at the department for naming furniture, whoever was assigned tables was a really lazy employee. I mean, we got Dave over in storage, burning the midnight oil, coming up with armoire and sideboard and buffet. Meanwhile, you set your coffee on a table one time and... Lazy. If you like this video, make sure that you hit the like button and that you're subscribed. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.